Good morning, I'm Neva Reddy Manu, and this is your morning news fix for Tuesday, 29th of October. In this update, Unions are pleading with the government not to switch up how it manages pay settlements. A cabinet paper states costs of all settlements to date are $1.55 billion a year, which has been deemed significant. It reduces central decision-making, puts more emphasis on employers and employees, and comes after the disestablishment of the Pay Equity Task Force. Council of Trade Unions Vice President Rachel McIntosh says the settlements go towards paying people so they can live lives of dignity. That monetary amount You just can't compare that with the cost to families and communities and children in our future of underpaying people. The Labour weekend road toll period officially ended with no deaths on our roads. It betters the previous lowest Labour weekend in 2013 when one person died. It's also a turnaround on recent long weekends, with six people dying last year and seven dying over the latest Easter period. The period started at 4pm on Friday and finished at 6 o'clock this morning. Changing consumer habits in a tough economic environment could be behind an apparent decline in dairies. Retail NZ believes there will be fewer dairies in 2024 than their previous count in 2018 of around 4,000. Communications manager Anne-Marie Johnson told Ryan Bridge retail's been doing it tough. And if we want to keep our dairies open, then we need to support them. But um, certainly dairies are a, a real focal point in the community. Wellington City Councillors will meet publicly for the first time today since the government decided it would appoint a Crown Observer. They've previously only met behind closed doors, but this morning's long-term plan, Finance and Performance Committee meeting is open to the public. The Corrections Union says a lack of WorkSafe investigations illustrates a gap in prison safety accountability. Data released under the Official Information Act shows WorkSafe were notified of 152 incidents in the past decade, but have investigated just two. There was a single conviction over the death of Robert Cave, who was crushed by a log during community work in Nelson in 2014. The Corrections Association's President Floyd Duplessis says it's a concerning record for a volatile and violent workplace. It's absolutely shocking, and it saddens me that the worth and safety of staff is held so lowly not more is done to scrutinise and improve. A simplified passport process looks to be helping New Zealanders reflect their identity. Figures requested under the Official Information Act show nearly 300 people over the age of 18 changed the agenda on their passport this year. There's been a 189% increase over the past decade. After changes in 2012, transgender people only need to provide a statutory declaration stating which gender they want displayed. And in sport, Manchester United have sacked manager Eric Ten Hag. The move comes with the club sitting 14th in football's Premier League after nine games. Kiwis forward Jordan Rickey has gifted his debut jersey to his granddad, fulfilling a boyhood promise. And former international Jody Brown claims the Constellation Cup performances of Silver Fern's goal shoot Grace Inweki should have Netball New Zealand reconsidering their eligibility rules. She's moving to Australia, so can't play in 2025. And I'm Neva Reti Manu. That's your latest news, folks. We'll be back with the next update at midday from the Newstalk ZB Newsroom.